Hello there guys, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm here with another review from Avery and Ash from 90 Day Fiancé. This is Season 4, Episode 11, Private Eyes. And we never needed to be much of a private eye to detect that Ash was a scammer. None of us know how Ash makes his money, but one thing's for sure, it's not from relationship coaching. And now Avery's decided to open her eyes, she's noticed it too, finally. If you're new to my channel, welcome. We have a very friendly little flock here. And so please feel free to put your comments and weigh in on whichever side you want to come down on with this relationship. Also, don't forget to press the subscribe button and you can follow me on Twitter at mbird99. And a very quick thank you to everybody who's subscribed thus far. Thank you so much for all of the support. So Ash and Avery are at the Airbnb and you can cut the atmosphere with a knife. Avery tells us last night was the longest night of my life. This is because apparently she and Ash have been arguing non-stop since his relationship seminar. Seminar? Oh, you mean the time he stuttered his way through somebody else's stand-up set in front of seven unimpressed women? Is that what you mean? Yes, just to let you know, we've stopped calling it a seminar and now we've started calling it a shit show, which I actually believe is more than charitable in the circumstances. So I'd like to give a big thank you to News Cat, who tweeted me on the 28th of April and he said, Ember, check this out. And he sent me a link to the seminar that Ash tried to copy, which is from somebody called Mike Gungle. And his seminar was Men's Brains and Women's Brains Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. Men's brains are made up of little boxes. And we have a box for everything. We've got a box for the car. We've got a box for the money. We've got a box for the job. We've got a box for you. We've got a box for the kids. We've got a box for your mother somewhere in the basement. We if you think of the brain of the man, there's boxes in, that, in, in his brain. And each box represents something. Now your brain, is interlinked. So when you're thinking, you're thinking of many things at a time. Everything's like, mm, it's going crazy in your brain. And for a man, it's completely different. Now, women's brains are very, very different from men's brains. Women's brains are made up of a big ball of wire. <laughs> and everything is connected to everything. Now men, we have a box in our brain that most women are not aware of. This particular box has nothing in it. In fact, we call it the nothing box. A woman, when there's something small, it tends to get really big. And for a man, our brain is working very different. That's why with men, there is a box in their brain that we call the nothing box. That's why a man can do something seemingly completely brain dead for hours on end. You know, like fishing. And we love to be in the nothing box. Fishing, that's why we can fish for such a long time, for sometimes like five, six hours. So as I think it's clear to see, Ash has plagiarized this, but not very well. Lots of what was being said in the first instance was based in humor, and it was for people that are already in relationships. Ash delivered similar information arrogantly. And instead of a mixed audience, Ash had just single women who were looking for Mr. Right. Like I said last week, Dunning-Kruger is in full effect. Avery tells us Ash gets defensive when she comes at him with difficult questions. And Ash says Avery can't let go and she keeps on saying he's sexist. Ash tells us that Avery didn't have his back at all and it really breaks his heart. He says he wants to walk away, but today she's supposed to meet his ex-wife and son. He doesn't know if he wants to move forward with it. And Avery's sitting on the sofa, giving him a cut eye with her arms folded. And just like the woman in the shit show last week, she has her head cocked petulantly to one side. And I can't help but think that it's really not the body language of somebody who wants to sort things out. Ash wants to talk to her and he tells her, you're a very cold person. You're heartless. Why do you hurt me? I screwed up yesterday. My ego was hurt. Everything was hurt. And your reaction to that concerns me. And Avery says, I don't think you have ill intentions. 
but things about you concern me. Ash said the issue is with you now and not with me. But Avery's not having any of it. She says, I feel extremely attacked right now. I've exposed him. Really? I think he's exposed himself. And now he's deflecting the situation onto me. And Ash says, you didn't listen to me. You didn't feel my pain. You had your own construct and I was squashed like an ant. I feel like a dog you've kicked. And Ash tells production, see, she doesn't care. She just doesn't care. And Avery says, he's emotionally irrational. I don't know if I want to move forward with this relationship. And then she sat on the sofa saying, I'm done. And this argument really is going nowhere. Neither one is listening to the other. And I think that Avery knows Ash isn't who or what he says he is. Avery doesn't believe he has a legit business or a legit way of making money and she's over it. But Avery's saying she thinks it's all because he's sexist. Well Avery, Ash is a Muslim from a Muslim country. You've never asked him questions before, such as what's the role of the woman in the home? And it's only really come up since you saw him crash and burn at his shit show. So what's my take on all of this? Well there's two sides of this argument I believe. And from looking at what everybody's saying on Twitter and so on, there are many, many problems with Ash. And I agree with them. I don't believe he's a relationship coach. And as we all know by now, Ash took his so-called seminar, The Main Points, through another psychologist's routine on relationship coaching. Now, to me, the most hilarious thing about this is the guy whose seminar he took everything from was somebody who was doing a seminar on how people in relationships, already in relationships, interact with each other and the different ways in which women can get through to men and vice versa. But Ash's seminar, Stroke Shit Show, was called Finding Mr. Right. So you've stolen material from somebody who was talking about relationships, but about a totally different type of relationship problem. And it was trying to use the same arguments and the same theories in a completely different context. Ash's context, Finding Mr. Right, is completely different from when you've already found your Mr. Right, but you want to know how better to communicate with him, and he wants to know how better to communicate with you. So Ash is making out that all the problems he's suffering now are from Avery because she's not helping him and she wasn't comforting him or helping him in any way when he was doing his seminar and he hasn't admitted his own mistakes namely that he didn't practice he had no notes he, and he had no real idea about what he was talking about and he's making Avery the scapegoat for this and completely blaming her and he's certainly gaslighting her because the main thing that he's saying is you're heartless you're heartless and I agree totally with this point of view. However, the eBird has an unpopular opinion, and I believe there is an alternative point of view. And I think both of them are wrong. So Avery, before the actual seminar, didn't say to Ash, do you wanna practice in front of me at some point? Are you confident? Do you know what you're doing? And I think most people would have done that with their partner, knowing it's obviously one of their first or second seminars they've ever done. You could tell he hadn't done it very much previously. And let's not forget Avery did say when she was walking into the seminar with Ash, yeah, I know Ash is a little bit uncomfortable. If you already know that he's a bit uncomfortable, why didn't you go through everything with him before he went in so that you know he was more comfortable and had a clearer idea about what he was going to talk about and how it was going to go? There's no doubt in my mind that TLC set him up a little bit as well. And I'm sure he must have said some things which went well, but it was edited together to make him look as bad as possible. But Avery, if you're in love with him as you said you were, you would have wanted him to do well. It seems to me you didn't. It seems to me you wanted to test him, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but please be upfront about it. And please don't be surprised to be gaslighted later. Also, when they got into the room, aside from the fact that most of the women there were already anti-Ash in the first instance, and you could tell by the way they were looking at him right from the word go, Avery didn't try to help him at all. When he had his little meltdown and had to run out of the room, Avery followed him and said, what the hell was that? And instead of calming him down and thinking, right, we'll discuss this later, all she said was, okay, go outside and talk to them about the five love languages. When that went wrong also, she sat at the back of the room, glaring at him and shaking her head and putting her head down. And I think to be fair, he's right, she did kick him when he was down. And after the whole thing finished, she just wanted to go on and on about, I think you're sexist and do you really believe all of these things? And where did you get all of this stuff from? And what do you see as a woman's role? Instead of thinking, let me let this calm down for 24 or 48 hours. Whenever you've asked Ash difficult questions before about his ex-wife or his son, 
or what he actually does in his relationship coaching. He's always done this ridiculous double speak, his Ash speak. And you, Avery, have let him off every single time. You've never really pinned him down on any points. You've never really questioned him. So why now? Why do you have to bring all of these things up right now when he's at his lowest ebb? You've let him off all of these things until you've actually been embarrassed by his standing. You didn't help him at all. And I believe that Avery has checked out of this relationship totally. If you really wanted answers, you could have waited a little while and asked him at a later point instead of nagging him and nagging him when you know what's going to be running through his head is, oh my God, the TV cameras were there. Everybody saw me. Everybody's going to know about this. I've completely embarrassed myself. I'm going to be personally and professionally embarrassed. And this is a massive hammer blow to my so-called business. When all of that is running through his head, she keeps saying, Ash, I think you're sexist. Ash, you don't know what you're doing. So I do think Ash has a point when he says you're heartless and you're trying to hurt me even further, even though he is gaslighting her. At the same time, Avery, you still didn't try to help him. You didn't try and help him dig himself out of his hole. And even after that, you didn't sit him down and say, don't worry, it's a moment in time. Next time, let's really prep properly and let's go forward in a professional manner. But my final words are for Ash. Ash, Ash, why are you trying to take the high road when you've been walking around these low roads for God knows how long? And I can't bear it when people take the high road when they've already visited the low road and they've been walking around these low roads for years and years already. You've been walking around these low roads so long, I'm surprised you even know there's a high road to take. You know in your heart of hearts, Ash, that you have messed up and you are embarrassed. You know that the person that you love, that you want to look up to you and you want to treat you like a man and like some sort of intellect, now looks at you as some sort of idiot and as some sort of dimwit. And the way that Avery's looking at Ash is the way that you look at a child that's been lying really badly, but that just won't admit it. And Avery now views you as you should be viewed, like the village idiot. So guys, let me know what you think. Do you think Avery's in the wrong for not giving Ash 24 or 48 hours to get his head together? And do you think she should have talked to him about all of these factors before she saw his little shit show? It seemed as if she wasn't really bothered if he was running some sort of scam, unless one, he was sleeping with other women, or two, it seemed like he wasn't going to be able to bring the money in. And it seems to me that she doesn't want to bring him to America because she's just not really sure of him or his skills or his usefulness to her in her life. And guys, I know what you think already about Ash and his skills. And one of my subscribers pointed out last week things which point to the fact that Ash may be some sort of paid escort for these women. The first thing is that he said a couple of weeks ago, right now I'm single. And then he suddenly pulled it back. And it's almost as if he's been there before with different women and he's had to remind them that he's single. And suddenly he forgot himself and said it when Avery was talking to him. And then the second thing is that at one point he said, most of my clients are older women who are career women who don't have time and I give them the boyfriend experience. But what does that mean exactly? What is the boyfriend experience? That's usually when you pay as an escort for someone to pretend they're your boyfriend. And then finally, remember the florist who said he's one of my best customers? It seems as if you're not just purporting to be an escort with these women, but to some extent, you're leading them on and buying them lots of flowers and kind of pretending you are in a relationship with people. If you're just having casual flings as you make it out and I haven't had any girlfriends, why are you buying them flowers? Who gives flowers to a booty call? Not anyone I know. And I think Avery's finally clocked on to all of these things and put all these things together. And on top of that, she realises, I don't think Ash is going to be any sort of a success. Therefore, he's no longer useful to me or of any interest to me. And pretty much from the look on her face, she has checked out of this relationship. So let me know what you think in comments down below. And also let me know what you think about the similarities between his, between his seminar and the seminar that I showed you. And as always, I look forward to hearing your comments. So thank you so much for listening to my video. If you haven't already, please don't forget to press that red subscribe button and don't forget to like and share the video. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at mbird99. I'll be back very soon with another video. You've been listening to eBird Online. Ciao for now.